Welcome back to another episode of Molecular Playground. In this one, I illustrate the science behind organic oxidations, starring chromic acid. Contrary to popular belief, chromic acid isn't really a proper acid, but a mixture of sulfuric acid and chromate salts, in this case, sodium dichromate. Nevertheless, it is still very oxidizing to organic compounds, as you'll soon see. But before I begin, I must stress the danger of this experiment. Hexavalent chromium is a highly toxic mutagen. If ingested, it can almost certainly heighten your risk of cancer as it can form complexes with your DNA. Make sure you have thick rubber gloves and a mask soaked in water or some weak base, along with a reducing agent like sodium metabisulfite. For the first test, I'm going to react chromic acid with isopropanol. The reaction happened as it did because the hydroxyl group is susceptible to oxidation. You see, the chromic acid oxidizes the alcohol into acetone. It cannot be oxidized anymore because there are no more hydrogens on the functional group, meaning there are no more hydrogens on the carbon bonded to the oxygen. For the second test, I will react acetone with chromic acid. Nothing. That is because acetone cannot be oxidized anymore as it has no hydrogens on the functional group. For the third test, I am reacting chromic acid with terpbutanol. As you can see, nothing really happened other than a brief red flash. This is because terpbutanol is a tertiary alcohol, meaning the hydroxyl group is bonded to a carbon with three methyl groups. Chromic acid cannot oxidize into a ketone or carboxylic acid because there are no hydrogens on the functional group. For the fourth test, I react glycerol with chromic acid. Now that was vigorous. The tar blobs almost touched the camera. The reason for this reaction is because glycerol can be oxidized five times. The hydroxyl groups at the end oxidize to aldehydes and then carboxylic acids, while the hydroxyl group in the middle oxidizes to a ketone. All these oxidations reduced a lot of the chromic acid, which is why it becomes green at the end. Much of the chromium has been reduced to a plus six oxidation state to a plus three. For the fifth test, I react toluene with chromic acid. As you can see, nothing really happens. That is because toluene is just benzene with a methyl group. If this reaction worked, the chromic acid would react with the allylic hydrogen right here. However, that did not happen. In literature, chromic acid should react with methyl benzenes, but examples seem to apply to either needs an activating group or harsher conditions. I'm sure permanganates though can do this reaction with ease. For the fifth test, I react potassium hydroxide with chromic acid. Clearly, the reaction proceeds as a simple neutralization. An important distinction to make, though, is that potassium hydroxide is non-reducing. As I add more flakes, the solution changes into a full-bodied orange paste. The chromic acid reverted back to potassium dichromate with some yellow potassium chromate staining the sides. Once the chromic acid is fully neutralized, the chromium atom still retains its plus six charge. That is a very important distinction. In the sixth test, I react sodium metabisulfate with chromic acid. As I add more, even adding right now, flashes of green appear in the solution. Eventually, it all turns green. That is because sodium metabisulfite is an alkaline reducing agent. Not only does sodium metabisulfite neutralize the acid, but it also reduces chromium-6 to chromium-3. In the seventh test, I react magnesium with chromic acid. The reaction proceeds rather calmly only because magnesium metals are rather weak reducing agents. Magnesium only reduces well at high temperatures, which is why it is commonly employed to reduce metal oxides into pure metals. In this scenario, it is releasing hydrogen gas as the magnesium metal becomes magnesium chromate. In the eighth test, I react 10% sodium hypochlorite with chromic acid. The reaction proceeds rather vigorously than expected. Since these solutions are both oxidizing agents, I thought nothing would really happen. Instead, chlorine gas is released. I think it is because the solution is simply acidic and causes sodium hypochlorite and sodium chloride to become chlorine gas, water, and sodium dichromate. If I add more bleach, the solution will eventually turn orange, indicating a solution of sodium dichromate. In the ninth test, I react ham with chromic acid. Nothing really happens, actually. I stir it around for a bit, and it looks like it has some honey bourbon glaze. It might have been cooked a little because of the sulfuric acid, 
but otherwise this was a rather uneventful test. In the 10th test, I racked sugar with chromic acid. At first, nothing happens, but then the reaction quickly picks up quite vigorously. The reason for this is that the sucrose molecule is full of hydroxyl groups. This makes the molecule ripe for oxidation. In fact, it is like a buffet for chromic acid, so much so that all the chromic acid is reduced to chromium-3, as indicated by the green color of the solution. In the 11th and final test, I react hemp oil with chromic acid. At first, nothing happens. I agitate it a little and something starts to pick up. The reaction quickly progresses quite vigorously. This is because chromic acid can sufficiently oxidize the double bonds in the unsaturated oil. Now I am not sure if it makes vincinyl diols, diones, or fully cleaves the bond into two carboxylic acids, but I imagine it produces a mix of products as I am not using exact proportions.